Hey, so I had a question recently in uh, Spaces. If you're not a part of Spaces, feel free to join me. I'll make sure the link is in the in the notes. Uh, where a a reader was having trouble connecting with the person that they were reading for, and this was this is deeper than just having a connection. But I think two things are related because there's the connection, and <clears throat> their question was coming from a point of distance reading, like long distance reading, either through Zoom or some other uh, facility that allows you to communicate with someone that's not right in front of you. And I do that all the time. And I've done it for a long time. I've done it for years. And I hadn't really thought about there being a challenge around it. Uh, but this person was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I, I need help. And so uh, we talked a little bit about it, but I wanted to talk about it here so I could hopefully provide some additional insight on what it is that I do what you might want to do in order to have um, a stronger connection when you're reading with someone and a stronger connection when you're reading with someone who might be at a distance. So uh, the idea of being connected or disconnected is a feeling that happens sometimes in your head because you overthink it, in which case that's not really, uh, it's not reality, it's just a thing, <laughs> it's an experience. And uh, the, the disconnect that happens when it's mental is really about your own barriers kind of getting in your own head and not being ultimately connected holistically through your own body and energetically to this other person. So disconnects can happen when you get in your head. Uh, and people do that when they're worried about what the cards actually mean or what the question really is or if there isn't a question, what are the cards going to say and how do I tell them what the, what the answer is? Uh, so you can get in your head in a lot of different ways when you're reading tarot. In order to get connected, because that's the first thing, uh, the connection happens when you prepare for the reading the connection happens stronger, faster, easier when you are grounded. Uh, the connection can happen by speaking to the other person and inviting them in. Now, some people may confuse speaking with cold reading and taking in information that they can then regurgitate back. Uh, but that, if you're if you're working in a way that is ethical, that's not what cold reading is. You're you're making a connection that will tether you to this person so you know what it is they need most. And sometimes speaking with someone is how a connection is made. For some people, the connection made is made instantly. You can feel that energetic tie happening. Uh, but sometimes both need to happen in order for the connection to be there. Because the energetic connection isn't just from you. It's also from the other person that you're reading for. And they need to be available to that and open. And uh, speaking to them can sometimes uh, bring down walls, take down barriers, release anything that may be in the way so that the two of you can connect better. So that connection isn't always on you. Sometimes it's also on the person who's sitting across from you whether they're in front of you on a screen or in front of you in person. Uh, other things that might help you get more connected so that you can uh, have a, a stronger reading or feel more comfortable in your reading is um, having a space that feels right for you. So for example, uh, before I do readings for folks in this space, uh, you can see that over here is is fairly clean. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's got a few stacks of books or, you know, these are little journals and so I need some green around me. Um, there's also a little plant over here that's next to me that you can't really see right now. And, uh, and some things that I might need to grab that are in this little organizer. Uh, there's also a thing for my back back there if I need to <laughs> if I need to support my back better than the chair does today. Uh, I also have candles around me because the candle is an energy that I like to work with. It puts me in a frame of mind. It puts me in a state of mind that I am doing this work now. It's a ritual. I also sometimes use olfactory things because I, scent is very powerful for me. It'll knock me into a memory. It'll knock me into a state of mind really quick. And so I create little um, 
scents or olfactory sprays that I use. This one actually is dual purpose. It's a Palo Santo spray, so it uh, clears the energy of the space and it puts me in a frame of mind. I have another one that I use that I put on my wrist that is um, cedar and uh, some other essential oil notes that um, ground me uh, as someone from Oregon who grew up with a grandfather who had cedar everywhere. That was his livelihood. The smell is grounding to me. It is earthy. It is home. So olfactory things, uh, light, the way your space is organized. Uh, and then if you do it for me, if I, if I set up my space the same way every time, then I have a comfort level that something isn't out of space or order. I know what I'm doing. I am leading in this space. I am available to receive energy, information, insights, so that I can be at my best for the person who's sitting across from me. Uh, so those are things I think about when I consider uh, making a connection and how I can have the strongest connection and what that might be like, whether or not the person is in front of me or if we're at a distance. Now, one other thing I would say for distance is um, be comfortable with the technology because if you're using technology for distance readings and it's being all wonky on you, your internet keeps going out, Zoom isn't working right, you don't know where the record button is if you need it. If you're thinking about all of those things, you'll be taken out of that groundedness and lose the connection. So try it out ahead of time. Practice. Find someone you can, you can play with <laughs> and, and get comfortable with the technology because that's the only other factor really. Uh, other than other people in your house who might interrupt you. My husband likes zombie movies and they get loud and I have to ask him to turn it down. Um, <laughs> it might be something you need to think about is the technology. All right, hope this is helpful. Thanks, everybody.